Welcome back to the channel guys. It is me 8744. This is a video that I've been making I've been planning to make for a long time now What is wrong with Barcelona guys because Barcelona this season haven't been up to standards this season has been terrible so far and this season Needs some explanation. So I'm in here gonna try my absolute best to try to explain what's wrong with Barcelona today I don't know what you guys think in the comments below Please remember to like and subscribe and also let me know what you guys think is particularly wrong We're gonna talk about a lot of different things. We'll talk about the manager. We'll talk about Deco, Laporta, the players We'll talk about culmination of everything Okay, so I want to start with the players first since that's the most easiest to explain Then I'll probably get to the manager and then I'll talk about Xavi and Deco. I mean sorry, Laporta and Deco so let's start first with the uh, the players. The players for me are simply not good enough. I, I'm going to start from each specific aspect. Let's start with the defense. See, the thing is the defense this season has been basically the same as last season. The only real significant difference is that Joao Cancelo is now starting. And because of Joao Cancelo starting, one of Christensen and Koundé is getting benched. Araujo is pretty much a regular mainstay. Of course, Balde is a left back. See, here's my thing. When it comes to defensive, who offers you more? I feel like Christensen, for me, is just more assured defensively. I think Christensen is more assured. Kunde for me, is good. I like Kunde. I just feel like, for me, Kunde has more mistakes in him. So I think the, that's another problem with the season is our defense hasn't really been, like, um, consistent. We've been sh shifting and changing. And if you keep changing the partnership with the center back, you're not, it's not going to be good because you don't have establish chemistry. Chemistry is very, very important. And I think Xavi needs to find that back line and stick with it and be persistent with it. Only change if there's injuries or suspensions. Otherwise, keep it the same. You know. And for me personally, in my ideal scenario, I would do, this is my preferred choice. It would be bald in the left, Araujo, Christensen at center backs, and then Kensel right back. All right. And then Kunde can maybe come off the bench, you know, if Araujo isn't fully fit or we're, you know, that kind of thing. Kunde will be a sub player for me, you know. And I did hear that Barso next season is planning to sell one of their big defenders. We'd have to sell one of our big defenders to get a lot of money. And if it's between the two, Christensen and Kunde, I think Barso would actually choose Christensen since I think Kunde is actually more used. And I think Xavi prefers Kunde over Christensen. So that is one area that I think Xavi needs to improve upon. And that I think if he fix that, that could definitely help a lot of things. That's not a big concern, though, but I think it is still a concern nonetheless. And as, as good as Joao Cancelo is, Joao Cancelo is a fantastic player. I really like Joao Cancelo. I think he's a tremendous player. The problem with Joao Cancelo for me is that every time he goes forward, he makes us defensively bad, vulnerable. And we've seen teams that are very well, smart, very um, smart, they counter that. They expose that. And they use um, players to beat the transition. Right, because a lot of the goals that Barca have conceded this season have been in transition. We've lost the ball in the midfield. They make a ball over the top, and our defense can't handle it. You know, and with Cancel pushing so forward up, it makes us defensively look bad. So you know, that's the problem with Cancel is that he offers you so much attacking wise. He also offers you a lot. He doesn't. He's also a liability when it comes to defensively. So we have to figure out a way to get the right balance. The balance is very key. So that's one another area of concern. All right. So that is the defense. I think that's all I'm going to say in regards to the defense. We're going to go ahead and move on to the midfield. Because believe it or not, guys, even though our midfield is really good on paper, I feel like there's a lot of issues with this midfield. Let me start first in saying this right now. Pedri, De Jong, and Frankie De Jong, they're all too similar. They're all pretty much the same profile. And that is a big issue. Because an ideal scenario, when you want from your midfield, is you want the CDM. You want that ball destroyer, and you want the box-to-box -box player. That is the ideal scenario. Right, when you have players are like all the pretty much the same profile, you're gonna. It's not gonna be effective. It's not gonna be effective. Now, I don't think our midfield's been uh, that huge of a problem compared to defense and attack, but I still think it's a problem because the reason why we didn't so well this season, beginning of the season, without a boost DM, is that um, Gavi was really good. Gavi for me adds so much to this team. <laughs> Not only in the term of work rate, he also adds so much technically. He also works hard for the team. He made those crunching tackles. Remember, guys, Gabby did everything for the team. Gabby was phenomenal this season. I, this was one of Gabby's best seasons he's had in a long time. And I'm not a huge Gabby fan. I, I'll be honest with you. Gabby, for me, last season wasn't really that great. This season, on the other hand, though, he's, he really did prove. And it's a shame that Gabby's going to pretty much miss the entire season with an ACL injury. And I think Gabby, for me, is such a crucial player that Barca needs, and I think he adds so much to the team. And he was actually our DM. Because, I'm sorry, Oro Romero is not a good DM. This guy is terrible DM. This guy 
just cannot cope with pressure. Anytime you put pressure on him, he fumbles. And I think for Barca, going forward, our midfield has to, we need to find a way to get an actual proper DM. Because for me, as good as De Jong is, he's a fantastic player. I really like De Jong. I think he's one of, he's the best Barca midfielder of the three. It's just that De Jong, for me, just doesn't have the defensive capabilities compared to a, a really good CDM. He just doesn't. He does a good job, and I think he's the best that we have of the three. Um, it's just that he isn't like he just it just isn't it doesn't have that profile for me, and that's a big big concern because I feel like for me De Jong for me is just you can't put him in a defensive midfielder. I feel like for me defensive midfielder you have to be robust that work rate, and I feel like De Jong for me he's a great player. I really like De Jong. I just think for me his work rate at times can be a bit lazy, and I feel like sometimes he doesn't have like he can he can like let me put it this way. I'm trying to think about going to explain this. Basically, De Jong can offer you like 80%, when as a DM, you need to be like 110%, essentially. Like, I feel like De Jong isn't switched on all the time. He's switched on for like most of the game, but he's not switched on all the time. I and mean, as a DM, you have to be switched on all the time. It's just as simple as that. You know, and I think that's the reason why we've been struggling this season defensively is because we don't have a natural DM. And Gavi did so well that he almost acted like a DM for us. He would basically do it for us. You know, so I just think for Barca, man, we just have to find a DM this summer. We have to find a DM the Jared window. We have to find a quality DM because, I'm sorry, Romeo is just not it. Romeo cannot be it, and we have to try to figure out a solution, right? So, that's a big one, right? And also, remember, guys, our midfield and defense was really cheap. Besides Kunde and De Jong, our midfield defense was really cheap. We didn't really spend a lot of money. Now we get to attack, where this is my primary concern. This The attack is the primary concern with this team. Oh, guys, I'm sorry to say, that Polish guy, I'm not I'm not going to call him by his name. That Polish guy has to go. This is it. Because remember, guys, people are thinking like, oh, he's had a bad season this season. The guy was terrible last season as well. The second half in particular. It's just the reason why, it's just our defense was so good that he didn't have to score in every game. Right? Because remember, guys, prior to the World Cup, he was scoring in every game, I believe. He was scoring like one or two goals every single game. Like, if not every game, like most of the games. And uh, then after the World Cup, he took a massive dip. He maybe scored like, you know, one or two goals at every like one game for each month, basically. And the reason why we still kept him is because we, you know, of course, we won the league. You know, he was still that important striker for us. But ultimately, he's just not good enough this season. And it's not. And the issue is that we're going to bring in Victor Roque. This coming, this Jeremy window. And I just have a feeling that what's going to happen is Xavi might try to accommodate the Polish guy by putting J Victor Roque on the winger position. Which, if he does that, I'll be very angry. Because that is so unfair. You can't put Victor Roque on the winger position. And because, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Victor Roque has to start for this club. He has to start. And we need him to be a success. Because, I'm telling you right now, guys, I don't know where the goals are coming from. Because you can't guarantee goals with Rafinha. Rafinha, for me, just is just... I'm sorry, guys. I'm really losing my patience with Rafinha. Rafinha has been terrible, guys. I'm sorry. Rafinha is just doesn't offer you anything. He only does pressing. You know, he offers you maybe a good cross here and there, but the guy he has good work rate. I'll give you that. But as far as technically is concerned, he doesn't do it, man. He can't beat a player one v one. He can't dribble past players. He's just so frustrated this season, you know. And I I, I want Rafinha to, to to do well, and I think he is good. It's just that I don't think Barca is a club for him. I feel like Barca just isn't it for him, and I feel like he needs to go to more of a direct club, you know, a team that plays more direct football, and not this, like, tiki-taka and possession base that we're, we're trying to do, like, you know, and I feel like, for me, um, Barca just isn't it. Then we talk about Joao Felix. Uh, Joao Felix, for me, he is a good player, he is consistent, he, he is a good player, but the, the truth of the matter is that he is inconsistent, he's inconsistent, you know, and I just feel like, for me, Joao Felix, for me, he's just a good prospect, um, and for me, uh, uh, Barca, uh, apparently Atletico Madrid wants 80 million for him. And I'm saying this right now, guys. I'm sorry. He has max worth 40 million. We shouldn't be spending more than 40 million on him. Now, if you can get him for like 20 million or less, okay, fair enough, go for him. But if we have to spend like 30, uh, 40 million plus on him, actually, yeah, let's say 40 million. If we have to spend like 50 million, let's actually go with 50 million. If we have to spend 50 million on him plus, I'm sorry, he's not worth it. He's not worth it because... The guy doesn't offer you, he only offers you a goal every, like, a goal, like, every five or six games. And I'm sorry, it's not worth it. And you know what the real truth of the matter is? All of this front three, all the forwards we have are very inconsistent. They're not very good when it comes to scoring goals. And that's the problem with this team, is that when you're having a problem of not, cons when you're having a problem of not scoring enough goals every game, and your defense is also very leaky, 
you're not going to win games. You're going to draw points. You're going to concede goals. And that's the problem with this team is that I, I understand where Jarby's coming from because this team is very, very, very much imbalanced because our defense is actually solid. Our midfield is solid. The real main issue with this team is the attack. The attack is really the big issue with this team. And that is a huge problem for me as a Barca fan. And that if we don't figure out this attack, this season's going to be a failure. This season's going to be a write-off. Like, this season is a failure. Because I'll be really honest with you guys. If we can't get our attack clicking, we're not going to do anything this season. We're going to... This season is just going to be like... a. This season could be very well be a trophy season. Now, do I want that to happen? Of course I don't want that to happen. But it very well could be. It very well could be. Now, let's talk about Xavi. How much blame should he really get for this team? See, I sympathize with him. I understand where he's coming from. But I also feel like, I'm not saying he should be sacked, by the way. But I'm saying he should be criticized. Because I look in yesterday's game in particular. I look at the games that he's done this season. Why has he not benched that Polish guy? Why? There is no real reason to keep starting him. And apparently, I heard Javi is actually um, trying to get the, is, is trying to make every player happy by allowing them to choose whether they play or not. Which, if that's the case, that is that can't happen. As a manager, you can't allow the players to dictate, oh, I want to play? Okay, I'll play. You have to make this meritocracy-based. You can't make this a dictatorship and have only this, have only those guys play. Because that's not really fair for the likes of Ferran Torres. That's not really pl- fair on the likes of the Yamal, etc. That's not really fair. Because the thing is, we can't play Ferran Torres as a striker position. In fact, I actually think Ferran Torres is best as a striker. I don't think he's good as a winger. So, I feel like for me, for Xavi, you have to be brave. You have to make those decisions. Try something out different. The definition of insanity is keep doing the same thing again and again. Why do we keep persisting with the 4-3-3? Why not do a 4-4-2? Why not do a 4-2-3-1? You know, something like that. Try something else instead of persisting with this 4-2-3-1. So, I'm, I'm actually mad at Xavi for that, for the player thing. And then for tactics, he's doing the same thing again and again. You have to change things up. You have to change things up. Come on, Xavi. You can do this. I know you can do this right then we get to the substitutions i feel like he was very late at making the substitutions yesterday against Florence in particular and i feel like most of the season he's been very late anytime barca is in a losing position he um is calm about it he doesn't make substitutions he only makes substitutions when the game is getting very tight and we really need to go desperately for example yesterday's game against valencia we needed a goal after going down one we after after conceded a goal he brought those two players but my issue is why did it take for Valencia to score for us to get to uh, to make the substitutions? You know, or for example, I think it was it against um, Royal Antwerp. We were losing at halftime, I believe. Why didn't Javi make substitutions then? Right? These kind of these kind of things really make me annoyed. Is that Javi is not being active with the substitutions? He's waiting too long, waiting too late. You know, and my problem was that if things are going bad, you got to make a change quickly. You don't just wait for it to continue, right? And I just feel like for Javi, he needs to start. Being that, and you know, I know he doesn't have the experience, and I know he's not the most, um, he doesn't have the experience, but I feel like for me, Javi can succeed at Barca. It's just that he needs to improve upon his own, he just needs to reflect upon himself, right? And I feel like for me, that's the problem. So, I feel like for Javi, I'm mainly mad at him for the players thing and also for the tactics, and I'm not trying different tactics out. And I feel like for me, my thing with Javi is that I'm going to give him the end of the season. I'm going to wait until the end of the season and see what happens. If we get to the um, if we get to the Champions League quarterfinals and we uh, we win La Liga, that's a good season for me. All right. Basically, I think what Laporte is going to do is that he's going to determine whether Javi stays or not based on whether the fact we win La Liga or not. I think if we win La Liga, he's for sure staying. Now, if we don't win La Liga, I wouldn't be surprised he's hacks him. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, am I saying he will, will do it for sure? At this moment, I'm not sure. At this moment, I'm not sure. Okay. And as this, as of the, right now, guys, I don't believe we're going to win La Liga. In fact, I actually think we're out of the race. Now, I know it's really early. We still have a lot of games to go. But um, at this current moment, I would need for Barca. The only way we could go win this league is we go on an insane winning streak. And I just don't see this team going on an insane winning streak anytime soon. So I think that's the problem. So I think it's going to, because for me, I don't think that Champions League is going to really hinge. I don't think Champions League, uh, Laporta will second base on that. I think it's going to be mainly on the league. Whether you win the league or not. It doesn't matter what about, what about the Copa del Rey. It doesn't matter about the Super Cup. It matters about the league. If he doesn't win the league, I think there's a very good chance he can get sacked. I'm not sure 100%. I can't say that for definitively. But I'm like pretty sure that his job will be at least considered. A questioned. Alright. Now we finally talk about Laporta and Deco. Laporta for me is 
I also feel like I fault for this club. I feel like for me, Laporta for me is making this club a bit too. Oh, what is it called? He's not being as serious as he should be, right? Because I feel like Laporta for me, um, uh, he vouched for players. He vouched for Felix. He actually wanted Felix at this club. I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Xavi wanted Felix at this club. And I feel like for me, Laporta and Deco needs to take responsibility here for the, the the players that we brought in because we brought we paid so much money for Lewandowski and we paid so much money for Rafinha for these guys to underwhelm. Now I will say that Lewandowski one was good purchase, even though it's looking bad right now. I do think it was still good for us um, to get him, but the Rafinha one it just wasn't great. It it, it failed. I think Rafinha has failed Barcelona. To be honest with you, and I just feel like for me for Laporta and Deco we could have spent that money more wisely. We could have invested in other. We could have invested in other positions, right? Instead, we spent so much money on two forwards that pretty much took around like two hundred million. Uh, so yeah, two hundred million of our budget, I believe. Actually, I think it was like one twenty-five million. You know, and so I think for me, for my thing is that we need to we need to be serious. We should have tried to got a really good DM this summer, and the fact that we just thought Romeo would be good enough for us was like a stopgap thing. It didn't work, right? And I feel like for me, for Laporte, I understand the financial situation is really bad. I understand that. But why didn't we try to sell more big players? You know, And I feel like that's, for me, uh, the responsibility that here is. Because at the end of the day, I can't really blame Xavi too much for the situation here. The players at the end of the day are mediocre. We don't have any world cl- We don't have any superstar amazing players in this team right now. They're at a generational level. We just don't. We don't have any insane attackers in this club right now compared to what we've had in the history. Like, you know, the likes of Messi, Romario... Um, at so, etc. We just don't have those kind of caliber of players, and so we need that superstar. And Barca, for most of the years in their history, have had that superstar in that attack. And I think we have to blame um, Laporta and Deco for allowing this to happen. You know, and also shipping up Fati. You know, maybe Fati should have stayed. In fact, I think Fati could have been a great asset for us this season. I think Fati. I would have actually liked to have kept Fati for us this season instead of. Um, you know, I feel like Fati could have offered you so much more. You know, coming off the bench. Also learning our Abde, getting rid of the forwards. We should have like we should have tried to make this more organized, right? And I felt like everything was just done in a way just to quickly do this, right? There was no proper planning. So yeah, anyways, I hope you guys today enjoy this video guys. I went on a bit of a ramble there, I think, towards the end. And it's a very complicated situation so far. So this came out to be around eighteen minutes, I believe. So a pretty long video for you guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. And please let me know what you guys think in the comments below, guys. I really I am keen to hear what you guys think of and like I said, guys, hope you guys enjoy. Remember, guys, like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.